Hi, we are Mike and Brenda Baker, and we're so glad to have you here with us today. Today our topic is, what remarriage taught us about ourselves. So obviously remarriage teaches you a lot about yourself and well, divorce teaches you a lot about yourself as well. In our particular case, the, the first and foremost thing that we learned and that most divorcees really need to learn is we had a part in it. Now, are there levels of blame? Well, sure. Are there, you know, different degrees of how, how deeply you were in it as compared to they were in it or vice versa? Well, sure. But that's not what we're talking about here. The point is, is it doesn't matter what those degrees were anymore. The divorce is done. You're in another marriage and you had a part in that divorce before. And by admitting you had a part in that divorce before, you're also saying, I understand I had some issues that I need to work on this time. So that those problems then are not those problems now. Right. You know, it's a lot of the times when we work with couples, everybody wants to point the finger at their spouse <laughs> rather than thinking, yeah. pointing the finger right back at themselves. Because let's be honest, we all have things that we need to work on. One of my things is I like to be in control. And as the woman, that's really not a good situation because then I try to tell him what to do all the time. And so I've learned that that was one of the failings that I had in my first marriage was I was constantly telling him and um, grumping at him, just nitpicking and things about what I wanted because I didn't understand the concept of being a good um, working together as a team rather than me being in, in control or him being in control. So, you know, really what it comes down to is, <clears throat> did your behavior merit what happened on the other side? That doesn't matter. Yeah. What we're talking about here is what you did. What was your part? In, in my part, uh, you know, my ex had, had three affairs because I was of the mind of, you know, given a second chance. But that doesn't mean, and that doesn't mean that what I did merited what she did. What it means, however, is that there were some serious shortcomings on my part, like I struggled with paying the bills, I struggled with keeping a job, I struggled with a lot of things myself that definitely contributed to the problem. And I'm not here to, to view whether my problem was bigger than her problem or hers was bigger than mine. Point was, is I fixed those things. Now, I do whatever it takes to pay the bills. I do whatever it takes to keep a job. I do whatever it takes. And now in this phase of life, I've decided that I need to follow my dreams so that my kids will follow their dreams. And that's a whole other discussion for a different time. But it was only because I recognized that I had a part in that first failing. Right. Right. So number two, marriage doesn't always have to be a struggle. Okay. Marriage is awesome. People are the problem. Okay. So what I mean by that is we choose whether it's hard and we choose whether it's easy. And I don't mean that we always just have to, to give in to everything. I just mean that we can choose to get along. We can choose to work through it. That doesn't mean it's always going to be easy, but it's going to be easier. Right. Yeah. Uh, a lot of the times it, it's definitely about your focus, about what you think, because whatever you think is what ends up happening. Mm -hmm. And so we always encourage couples to choose to see the positive things in their life, do a gratitude list every, uh, the first thing every morning and the last thing uh, before they go to sleep because it helps us to keep those positives at the forefront rather than the negative things and what's going wrong in our marriage or with the kids or whatever. Uh, it, it helps those positive things to be the focus in our, in our lives. Yeah, because you know with the problems we had in the first marriage, a lot of times, we'll br without realizing it, we'll bring some of those issues in the next marriage. And then we wonder, why am I, why am I having the same problems in this marriage I had in the last one? Well, I got news for you. The only consistent part of that is you. <laughs> okay. So, uh, you know, there's just things you've got to decide. Do I really want to die on this hill? Do I need to die on every hill? Can I let this go? Was it a big deal the first time? Was, is it really a big deal this time? You know, I mean, and, and there are things that you can then say, all right, I had this failing doesn't need to be a failing. I need to fix it. Even though my spouse has said nothing about it, I know that I need to step up with it. And being your best self is always going to help not only you and your marriage, but also your spouse personally. 
It's going to help them to want to be better themselves because you are being the best version of you. Yeah. And don't forget that uh, if your marriage is hard, your kids are going to carry that into their marriage. So with that, number three, the unified front. All right. Now we're talking unified front. Now, some of you might be familiar with the term. Some of you aren't. I'm, I'm, you know, I come from a military background, so unified front's easy for me. But the whole point is, is it doesn't matter if you agree on everything. Okay. But what does matter is that you agree on the big things. You have to be on the same page. And the point I mean is with, uh, I've seen many households with two different faiths really struggle because really they're not on the same page. Just because they both constitute belief in God doesn't mean that they're on the same page. And then you've got one who is, if you get political, you've got one who's liberal, one who's conservative, not a good mix either. And the point is, is you've got to come to a place where you're unified, where, okay, I don't necessarily agree with how you disciplined this child, but I'm not going to call you out in front of that child. And I'm not going to belittle you in front of that child. I'm going, we're going to go somewhere else. We're going to discuss it. And until we can come to an agreement, I'm just going to back you up and we're, we'll move forward from there until we can agree on what needs to happen. Well, and the way that we, we chose, now we're not saying that you have to do it this way in order to be successful, but the way that it worked best for us is that we chose that if we couldn't make a unified decision, Mike would make the decision for the family. Now I trust him explicitly. He can, like, I know he is going to do exactly what needs to be done for the family. And I also know that I'm a more emotional person. And we don't want to be ruled and we don't want our choices to be ruled by emotions. And so we chose to have him be the one that makes those choices if we can't. Now, usually we can make choices together, but there have been a few in our blended family that we've had to make really hard choices on. Yeah. So let me, let me give you a caveat on this too. There's a lot of people that don't like necessarily how Brenda and I do it because they have a problem with somebody being in charge, okay? But let me give you some perspective. When you go into a restaurant and you order a meal and that meal is not right and the waiter won't fix it, who do you then want to talk to? You wanna to talk to who's in charge. Why? Because that person can make a decision. So when we go into a business, we don't have any problem with it. But like we discussed in an earlier video, the mom and dad are in office, husband and wife are in office in an existing family unit. It's okay for somebody to have last say. It's okay for somebody to be in charge. You need to decide who that's going to be. Always try to make the decisions together, but ultimately there has to be a fail safe that says if we can't decide, then one of us just needs to make the call. Exactly. And you know, honestly, the teamwork portion of the unified front can be the most difficult, but it also can be the most bonding times of your marriage because mm -hmm. anytime you have to discuss something in a lot of detail and it's not just one conversation, you're going to bond over those things, especially if you're not yelling at each other. You know, we don't, typically we don't yell at each other because it, it just does not serve us well. And so we not that not, it's never happened. Not, yeah, <laughs> exactly. But I mean, it hasn't happened much in the last 24 years. I mean, no. we've almost been married 25 years and we've only had a handful, a handful of yelling fights, which yeah. we're thankful for because both of our, our first marriages were ugly yes. at all times. <laughs> so then remember, you had a part, your marriage doesn't always have to be hard and have a unified front. Exactly. So we thank you so very much for being here with us today and sharing this time with us. If we can encourage you in any way, please leave a comment below. Uh, in, or if you have any questions or whatever, please uh, just, like I said, leave a comment. Thanks so much for being with us today. Bye. Mm -hmm.